Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. In the last episode, we were just about done exploring the commons, and we were about to head up to the Diamond Quarter. However, I remembered we've got this little area down here. The Deep Roads are home to the Darkspawn now. Oddly, they're supposed to be safer to travel during a blight. Yeah, because the, uh, the dark spot all go topside. Ah, the Shaper's Life. Okay. The Shaper's Life. Orzammar has carved a legacy from the stone, but history is more than the comings and goings that fill the streets. These caverns are old cuts and well-travelled. The true will of the stone is revealed far from the halls of politics and commerce. The Shaper must step away from the familiar and seek out revelations from the frontier or buried secrets from paths abandoned. The Shaper must first walk away if he is to return. First steps from the Shaper's life. And hello, Mr. Nug. You're coming with me. Now then, I see a rune plate over there. Unfortunately, these guys will not let us pass, so... Can't get to it just yet, but soon, soon we will. And to the diamond quarter we go. Oh, Artin getting ever closer to her home. Oof. A doll, help me, we fought her. In the uh, provings, in the origin, whoops, whoopsie, in the uh, origin story, we fought Adal Helmi. I did not expect to see you again. I am afraid you will find Orzammar much changed. Hmm. She doesn't seem too hostile, though, which is nice. Hmm. News of the oh. hour: Is Lord Balin considering a dissolution of the ancient clans? He refuses to comment in the assembly. I'm pretty- yeah, this is Haramont's estate. Okay. We should probably- it would probably do us well to remember that. Of course. The mall. Lovely. Oh, Lady Dace. Is that- Is that who I think it is? No. So we um we encountered a Lady Dace in the origin story, I believe. Um Let's see. Oh no, it was Lord Dace. Excuse me. Okay, so it was Lord Dace. So presumably this lady's Oh god. So was it Lady Helmy? Oh, it was probably Narav's mother who we um, pissed off. Oh, well. There's Narav. Hello again, my dear. Lord Balin is the voice of change and defense. Lord Haramont is the voice of stagnation and ruin. Hmm. Is he now? Oh, the royal palace. His home, you know, home. after all this is over, nope. I wouldn't mind getting a job here. I could sing, tell stories, help the king get items from high shelves. Liliana, how dare you? There are no high shelves in Orzammar. Everything is within arm height. Also, don't know if you've noticed this, the dwarves have unnaturally long arms. I don't think they need any help reaching for things. But we... This... And this is Balan's power base. We we dare not enter there. Not just yet. Some nobles. And I'm pretty sure, yes, that is the assembly. That's where we need to go. But again, I I would like to explore first. Hello there, my dear. And this is the shape rut. Okie doke. Again, I imagine that Artin 
has been in here? She Please, must have been. Oh. Dare take from the memories? Hello, are you okay? Orden, I'm outraged. A thief in the shaperet. What have we been reduced to? Did you get a good look at him? Not my concern. Of course this is my concern. Like, who in their right mind would steal from the shaper? Like, that's, that's outrageous. Did you get a good look at him? I did. He was bald, with the most garish brand across his head. Almost like he took pride in being castless. Imagine. Ah, he's probably in the slum somewhere. As if he'd find a buyer for a stolen tome in Dust Town. They couldn't know the value. Aye, uh, buddy, you didn't... You didn't need the, um, the, the anti-castless comment, but, like, like, we'll, we'll find the book, hopefully. Ooh! Okay, good for you, Wim. The Legion of Steel. Paragon Caradin vanished in the 11th year of the reign of King Valtor, and with the Paragon, the entire process for Gollum manufacture was lost. Expeditions were sent into the Deep Roads to track him, but the Darkspawn drove them all back. Finally, in the second year of the reign of Queen Getha, 126 golems, the entire Legion of Steel, were sent to recover the Paragon. None returned. The Shaper of Golems refused to support any further attempts to find Caradin, and the Paragon was officially declared dead. The Shaper never recovered from the loss of an entire legion of golems, and never again allowed an all-golem regiment in the Deep Roads. From the Stone Halls of the Dwarves by Brother Genitivi, Chantry Scholar. Oh, um, pardon me. Were you looking for a particular volume? Not that I could really help. I, um, don't know the libraries very well. I'm just doing some research. What kind of re research? Sounds important, looking to hire help. I'll just stay out of your way. What kind of research? I was looking for something about the Orton Taig. It was lost during the last blight, and there aren't many records left. They were a noble house once, descended from the Paragon Orton, who composed the grand epic of the Seven Brothers and the Ortonic Symphony. My mother's family believes they were descended from Kalana Orton, who was training in Orzammar when the Taig fell. I'm even named for the house, Orta. Unfortunately, any records would be buried in the Taig's ruins, somewhere in the Deep Roads. I'm a Grey Warden. I'm not afraid of the Deep Roads. I could try to find them. I could look in return for some of that Orton wealth. Sorry, I don't have time for this yet. As I mentioned before, Arthur is probably going to make a journey into the Deep Roads just to, you know, see if she can clear out any Darkspawn, maybe see if she can find anything down there. You know, so if, if she goes near the Orton Tig, then we, we could have a look. I'm a Grey Warden. I'm not afraid of the Deep Roads. A Grey Warden? Mother always said that if anyone could find the Taig, it was the Wardens. I hear Prince Balin and Lord Harrimont have both been sending out small teams these days. Yes, if you can find the Taig in any records, that could do it. That could prove I'm a noble. If you could. Maybe now that you're looking. It's almost too much to hope. Oh, you don't, my dear. Now, when? Let's see. Two magic, one willpower. Ooh, 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 ooh. You can pick up a specialization. To be perfectly honest, I don't... I I tend to give my, you know, the, the companions specializations that I think fit their personality rather than going for what's the most OP, in which case that would be Arcane Warrior, but... I, I don't see Wynne as an arcane warrior. I can't see her striding into battle. Hmm. I, I think I'm just going to leave that blank for the time being. Ooh, cleansing aura. That is very good. Yes, please. I, I was worried that the plus would remain. If the plus goes, then I, I will probably never actually give her a secondary specialization. Now then, we have the Shaper. He uh, probably won't be too pleased to see us. Oh, that's just a scribe. For some reason, I thought that was the book. And hello again. 
When I last walked this hall, Endrin was king and Orzammar was at peace. The memories often speak of the swiftness with which change overtakes us. But it is different to see it firsthand. I apologize, Warden. I should not burden a stranger with such thoughts. I am Zebor, the Shaper of Memories. How do you know who I am? I am no stranger to Orzammar, my Lord Shaper, yeah. Artin's probably met this guy. Artin... Artin knows why he's saying this. She's She wants to make him say it, though. She, she knows in her heart why he's being like, Oh, you're a stranger. I am no stranger to Orzammar, my Lord Shaper. Your exile is written in the memories, Warden. I'm sorry, but Orzammar cannot be your home. Nor I your Shaper. We must all obey the Ancestors' rules. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That is way more heartbreaking when you are a castle stalker. Because that's not what he says. What, um, also, I don't think you get that line. You get a similar line. Basically, you say, I was born in Orzammar. And he goes, no, you weren't. You weren't born in Orzammar. And basically, you get into this argument where you're like, what do you mean I wasn't born in Orzammar? I was raised in Dust Town. And he's like, no one was born in Dust Town. Those people don't exist. They were never born, therefore they can't be suffering. And they, they've never existed in Orzammar because their births are not written in the memories. Therefore, they can't even be people. And it's, it's that heartbreak of like, dude... I'm trying to save you, and you're telling me I don't even exist. What a dick. Oh, it's... Artin isn't feeling anything quite that bad, but I think she's... This is what hurts her the most. The fact that she's not in the memories anymore, that she is no longer a person. That hurts her more than anything. Let's talk about Orzammar, Lord Shaper. Ask and I shall do my best to answer. What's the difference between an ancestor and a paragon? Artin knows that. How did the caste system come to be? Tell me some of Orzammar's history. Ooh. I don't like any of these because Artin would know this. The caste system is, um... Actually, Orta brought it up, the Seven Brothers. That's what the caste system is. Um... There were seven brothers. One, one became king, thus creating the noble caste. One dedicated himself to protecting his older brother. He became the warrior caste. One was really good at smithing metal. He became the smith and so on and so forth. And then the youngest was like, I'm not really good at anything. I will just serve my betters and became the servant caste. So Orzammar Ozuma, knows all these questions. Artin knows the answers to all of these questions. So I I don't really see why she'd ask him just to parrot back information she already knows. I have no more questions. Your presence has been recorded in the memories. I wish you well. Oh, so even though we're in exile as a Grey Warden, we do... Oh, that's that's got to be awkward. <laughs> oh, God. And... <laughs> And Endrin had only two children. There's like a bit's been crossed out in it. And then Artin Iduken, the Grey Warden, entered Orzammar. Jeez. Damn. Okay, we have this book over here. Yes. In praise of the humble Nug. Did that say on delicious Nugs? Mm, om nom nom. I once served a human some nug, and he proclaimed that it was like eating an unholy union of pork and hare. The idea disturbed him so much that he declined to finish his serving and made himself content with some stale bread. Of course, this only goes to show this, that surfaces, human or otherwise, have tragically unrefined palates. The nug is surely the most delicious animal I have ever tasted. Only a dead man would not salivate at the thought of a tender morsel of roast nug melting in his mouth. The paragon Varen, although his house has fallen, shall always be remembered for discovering the wonders of nug flesh. 
Admittedly, it was discovered only out of desperation when he was separated from his legion and lost in the deep roads for a week, but we won't hold that against the good paragon. While nug pancakes and nuggets, my own children love these, are the nug dishes one encounters most often, nug can be prepared in other interesting and elegant ways. The late King Ansgar I Dukan, this is Endrin's father, this is our grandfather. The late Ansgar I Dukan adored nug, adored nug, so, seared on a hot metal plate and finished in the oven, and dressed in a cream sauce flavoured with deep mushrooms. You must be careful when using the mushrooms from the deep roads, because they often grow close to darkspawn bodies. They say that this is what gives them their unique flavour and intoxicating scent, but it also means that consuming too many of them may result in curious afflictions of the mind. From In Praise of the Humble Nug by Bregan Tolburn, Honoured Chef to House I Dukan. Yeah, I, I imagine that one of the first things Artin did upon reaching Orzama, I know that we've been playing, but I, I imagine she's, she's, you know, like as as day turns to night and all of that kind of thing, that there, there must be off time. I imagine she'd go and get herself some like shish kebab roast nug, you know, just as like street food from one of the kiosks. Like she, I think she would have greatly missed the taste of nug. Legion of the Dead. Yes, Stone's greeting, friend. You will fight ceaselessly in the Legion of the Dead. Motto of the Legion of the Dead. The Legion accepts all. So I was told by one of the Legionnaires himself, a dwarf who waited quietly at the entrance to the Deep Roads for the rest of his unit to assemble. They gathered slowly, each equipped with heavy armour and fine weapons, each painted with a grim tattoo, each painted with grim tattoos applied at their funerals at the, the night previous. Excuse me. For that is the nature of the Legion. They are all dead. Any dwarf may join the Legion, so long as he is willing to give up everything he has. The funeral rites are sombre. A final goodbye is said to family and loved ones. Any material goods are dispersed to heirs and last words are said, and then it is done. The, lo the new legionnaire marches out into the deep roads, never to return. The legion fights against the Darkspawn to the last, striking one final blow against the monsters that have claimed so much of their homeland. Many join the legion to clear the slate. Criminals join to avoid punishment. The dishonoured join so that their house and families need not suffer on their behalf. The bankrupted join so that their debts might be forgotten. A very few join for a last chance at glory, but the Legion takes them too. This group hopes to reach the fabled fortress of Bonamar, once the Legion's home, associated with the greatest of their paragons. Bonamar is a holy place. Its loss, the last great blow against the Dwarven kingdoms, and its recapture would be a glorious signal to all of Orzammar. But capture it or no, all of these warriors will die in the Deep Roads. It is a sobering thought, and I now know why the dwarves say the Legion's charge is the battlefield's most frightening sight. They have nothing left to lose. From Stone Halls of the Dwarves by Brother Genitivi, Chantry Scholar. Very interesting. Again, it's all stuff that Artin would know, but I, I do like reading the Codex entries. Ooh, on Dwarven religion. Dwarven faith. I believe, oh, this must be one that we got right at the beginning. Okay, I, seeing as it's been a very long time since I read this, I'll, I'll reread it. We are the children of the stone. She supports us, shelters us, offers us the most priceless gifts of the earth. The worthy return to her embrace in death, becoming ancestors. The unworthy are cast out, unable to rest, that their failings may not weaken the stone. So it has been since the earliest memories. We live by the stone, guided by the ancestors who speak with the voice of the provings, and whose memories the shape where it keeps forever in Lyrium. We do not accept the empty promises of heaven as the wild elves do, or vie for the favour of absent gods. 
Instead, we follow in the footsteps of our paragons, the greatest of our ancestors, warriors, craftsmen, leaders, the greatest examples of our lives spent in service to our fellow dwarves. Our paragons are joined with the stone in life and now stand watch at our gate, ushering in those surfaces privileged to visit our city. We know there is no greater honour to hope for, no better reward for an exceptional life, as told by Shaper Zibor. The chant of light is almost never heard in the halls of Ozumar. That is hardly surprising, for unlike the elves who were literally abandoned by their gods, or the Devinters who worship dragons, the dwarves have no gods at all. Even the concept of worship is foreign in Ozumar. Instead, the dwarves seem to venerate the stone, a name they give to the earth itself. This seems practical for people living underground, if perhaps a bit unimaginative. Screw you, whoever wrote this, Artin would be most offended. For guidance in spiritual matters, they turn to their ancestors. These ancestors, who are said to have returned to the stone, communicate their wishes to the living via brutal trials by combat called provings. The ancestors' collective wisdom is maintained by the Shaperit, which can apparently store records in Lyrium itself. Genitivi! Dude, don't, don't slag off my culture. Uh, da, 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 where was I? Set above the ancestors, above even kings, are the paragons. Dwarves who have achieved such greatness that they are elevated almost to godhood. These are the great figures holding up the hallway that leads from the surface. The first glimpse of Orzammar that outsiders see. From In Pursuit of Knowledge, The Travels of a Chantry Scholar by Brother Genitivi. I do like that in Stone Halls of the Dwarves, Genitivi is very, you know, like, oh, their culture is so interesting. But then in In Pursuit of Knowledge, he kind of like slags them off. I like that, that, you know, like, here's the book that the dwarves will read and here's the book everyone else will read. Oh, Genitivi, how could you? Oh, more of the Shaper's life. So we've read this one. This is the one we haven't read. The blessing of the Shaper is given only to those who walk with the stone. It is a path that cuts deep and the road is far from secure. But those who desire to work in memory must first honour it. Document the stone, protect her, and present a new history to the memories. Only then will the blessing of the Shaper be upon you. From The Shaper's Life. Yes. And traditional dwarven folk songs, a song about a nug. Okay. Nug sits in the mud. Nug wiggles his ears. You catch the nug, he slips away. Nug gets to live another day. Nug sits in the mud, Nug wiggles his toes. You hook the Nug, he slips away. Now the Nug runs off to play. Nug sits in the mud, Nug wiggles his nose. You tickle the Nug, he laughs away. Now the Nug sits on my plate. Nug pancakes, a well-loved dwarven nursery rhyme. Oh! Gloves of diligence and the search for the true prophet. The Search for the True Prophet. This tattered tome explores the possibility that Andraste was a powerful mage and not the Maker's Chosen. It seems this book was saved from a fire at some point. Ooh, all of the heretical books going down to Orzammar. That, that's personally what I believe, that Andraste was just a mage. I've mentioned this before, I think, that all of the, um, the, the miracles... The, the maker sent down. I think that was all just magic that Andraste was performing. And then in the aftermath of Andraste's death, when she wasn't really there to have a say in things, that her followers kind of tacked on this bit about, oh, she, and she feared magic and she hated the mages and she absolutely wasn't a mage herself. Mm -mm, not a chance. Of course. Totally was not any way magically inclined. Hello. I know who this is. And Artin would know who this is. Because this... I don't know what... Here's the thing. I don't... Excuse me. Balin would have had a second. 
because we had a second. I'm not sure if, I, I, to be honest, I can't remember if Vartag is Balin's second or if he's just a close friend. He at the very least is a close friend and Artin knows that. So we're going to avoid him. I thought I saw something in there for a minute. No, no, they're, they're just pictures. The they're not even pictures. Oh. Enter quietly if you wish to observe. I do. These aren't pictures. These are, um, lyrium veins. They've had a glass put in front of them, but oh, I, I do like that touch. Your mind has gone to dust if you think we would pass such a writ. Half our houses would go broke without the surface trade. The proposal is only effective until we have a king to ensure we are respected by the surfacers. Leaving you conveniently positioned to take over all contracts. I'll see your head on a pike first. Geshers, lords and ladies of the assembly. I've already doubled the guard to prevent violence. Must I summon more? Steward Bandalore, Balin's sympathizers are tying our hands with trivialities. They may as well open us to the sky. I suggest we put the matter to a vote. And I suggest you have a taste of my family's mace. Enough. The assembly is in recess until the members can regain control of their emotions. Ah, dwarven politics. It always ends in violence. Always. Oh, God. Bandalore? Stone forsaken fools and dusters. So it's true. The exile has returned. We are to treat you as a respected guest. I am a Grey Warden now. Do as you wish, Steward Bandalore. You always have. Watch your tongue, Greybeard. I have no liking for you. Hmm. I kind of wonder if maybe this guy didn't like Artin. Because... <sighs> How do I put this? Because... Like, this guy is old. He's clearly been playing the games of Dwarven politics for a very, very long time. And so I think this kind of young upstart just coming in and lots of people liked art in thus giving her, like, qu quite a bit of power that she never really used. I I think that maybe he, he didn't really like her. I'm tempted by number two, to be honest. I don't think she means it in, like, a really, like, oh, you've always done what you wanted. I think she... I don't think there's any malice to this. It's just the acknowledgement of, like, I've known you for a really long time. I know you don't particularly like me, but dude. Do as you wish, Steward Bandalore. You always have. It's the one perk to this position, child. Or should I call you Warden? I'm glad to hear the surfacers are making use of your talents. Respect for your role is great, but you won't receive a proper hearing until we have a king on the throne. Maybe it's not so much that he dislikes her. Maybe, maybe you, you know, it's that thing of like, oh God, this cocky child. I don't think that Artin was cocky, but, you know, you know, this youngster coming in and just kind of doing stuff and making these like, brash like oh we should have cast flexibility the, these very brash statements that are just gonna cause you know upheaval hmm a blight is coming is there any way i can break this stalemate so who has the authority to aid me no one has the authority currently everyone knows a blight is coming but no one gives a shit is there any way i can break this stalemate I must admit, Warden, I am at a loss myself. It lies with Prince Balin or Lord Harrowmont, and they are slow to trust anyone in these uncertain times. Doolin Verender, Harrowmont's man, can be found at the Harrowmont estate. Varteg Gavorn, Prince Balin's second, is often here in the assembly. I only wish there was more I could do for you. So the, the impression I get, I know I'm talking about this relationship a lot, but it intrigues me. I think he respects her in terms of like, she, she was good with politics and she was really good at killing Darkspawn. But I think he was also kind of annoyed at her of like, the, she's, she's young, she's just, 
she's gotten you know all of these political ties at quite a young age because she's just she's a natural diplomat and she's not using these ties in ways that i approve of i think that's what's going on there and uh, yes i kind of am stalling for time because we have a decision to make vartag or Doolan? who is artin going to throw her lot in for now at least i'm afraid you will have to wait and see until the next episode because i am mean like that i'm leaving you on a cliffhanger i'm so sorry but until the next episode oh there goes my timer timer i'm signing off it's fine you're okay calm down where was i so please remember to like if you enjoyed leave a comment below and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.